connections and dark moments in your life that God will introduce you to. And I appreciate the Lord for this connection. I give him the praise tonight. My sister did a wonderful job on this tribute tonight. Such, yeah, she, she did such a wonderful job. She cut some of my time. Not because it was long, but it was so relevant and appropriate. And, and what the Lord has given me tonight to speak to us was right in line with what she was saying. And I said, Lord, I just looked at First Lady and shook my head, put my head down. I said, okay, Lord. Uh, this is somewhat unorthodox, but I'm going to go this way tonight. If you have your Bibles, I want you to go to the book of Colossians, chapter number four. And I only want one verse of scripture. And I hope you didn't come to be impressed by my preaching. You, you have a prince of a preacher here. But I came to encourage the man and woman of God and to stir the minds of the people of God. Colossians chapter number 4, only reading verse number 18. If you have it, shout amen. If you don't have it, say wait a minute. All right, all right. I won't hurry up and turn, I'm going to have to sing again. Hallelujah. Colossians chapter number 4, verse number 18, and it simply reads, The salutation by the hand of me, Paul, remember my bonds, grace be with you, amen. The salutation by the hand of me, Paul, Remember my bonds. Grace be with you. Amen. One more time. The salutation, the greeting by the hand of me, Paul. And my greeting to you is remember my bonds. Grace be with you. Amen. The Lord would help me tonight. I want, to, I want to speak I want to speak from this subject simply remember my chains remember my chains Lord do it in Jesus name Amen you may be seated in the presence of the Lord I, I believe that the admonishment of Paul is leaving here to remember his bonds <coughs> propels us as pastors and preachers, especially in our day, to cause the people of God to simply remember. I believe that it might be one of the greatest responsibilities that we have as those that stand behind the sacred desk uh, as we administer the Word of God, not so much to seek uh, anything that is new. Because as I was raised or brought up in the church, many times I would hear them say that there's nothing new under the sun. You know, we, we always got to make something rhyme. So we say, if it's new, it ain't true. You know, uh, And so I, I believe that the older that I get and the more I come into the realization and understanding of the gravity of the call of God upon my life as a pastor and those that carry the precious gospel of Jesus Christ, uh, the more I find it necessary that we cause the people of God to remember. And I would say that that responsibility is even greater or has risen to a greater level of urgency in the days and the times in which we live. Mm -hmm. I'm reminded 
of the Apostle Paul when he began to write uh, in 1 Timothy chapter number 4 mm -hmm. he was writing to Timothy he says now the spirit speaketh expressing uh -huh. yes, yes. that in the latter time some shall depart from the faith yes. giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils right. speaking lies in hypocrisy uh -huh. Uh -huh. having their conscience seared with a hot iron forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them, which believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving. I'm almost there, for it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. If thou put the brethren, in remembrance of these things, thou shalt be a good minister mm -hmm. of Jesus Christ, nourished up in the word of faith and of good conscience whereunto thou hast attained. In other words, Paul simply stated to Timothy that if you want to be a good minister of Jesus Christ, you don't need to stress yourself and spend your time trying to come up with something new so as to uh, 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 satisfy the taste buds of the people of God. Go ahead. But rather, if you want to be a good minister, just cause the people to remember. Yes. Right. And, and I found out, I've come to find out that uh, many of the people that said, although God is saving some and uh, God is saving such as should be saved and our churches are growing in number. I've come to find out that the majority of those that congregate in our churches have been there for a little bit of a while. Uh, and, and because they've been there for some time, sometimes it becomes necessary because uh, I fear that some are struggling, uh, suffering from spiritual amnesia. Uh, there are things, amen, that we were taught, things that uh, we were rooted and grounded in. You know, things like prayer. You know, nothing real, real deep with stuff like prayer. I remember when, I remember when, when we would come to church and it didn't necessarily require anybody to be up preaching or speaking, but we would gather with no speaker and everybody would hit the floor and get on their knees and they would talk to God and we would have what's called a prayer service. But 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 now, but now, amen, the people only congregate and come if you got the right name on the marquee or the right flyer. That's the only reason why people will come, but 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 we've got to be reminded that man shall not live by bread alone. Amen. Man, man can't live. Man can't live simply by a message that makes him shout and tickles his fancy. But man needs to have some wholesome word. And this is why, amen, Paul tells Timothy, son, I want to encourage you. I don't want you to be discouraged because in the last days, they're not going to endure sound doctrine. That's right. Amen. He says they're going to heap unto themselves teachers having itching ears. And if the preacher in the 21st century is not careful, he will allow the people to cause him to become somewhat schizophrenic. What he delivers as it relates to the word of God. But I come tonight to encourage, I believe, a faithful servant of God. Amen. To tell them to just keep holding the line. Amen. Just keep, keep staying faithful to what God has called you to do. Amen. So Paul, Paul is writing and he's encouraging us, amen, to cause the people of God to remember. Well, our text tonight is found over in the book of Colossians. And when we began to look at the book of Colossians, we understand that this is one, amen, of the Pauline, or I would call the prison epistles, in which Paul, amen, writes this letter unto the church of Coloss, amen, and he's writing this letter, amen, he's writing this epistle to the church in Colossia, amen, to remind them and to warn them, amen, as to the dangers or the things that threaten the life and the soul of the believer. Yes. Amen. And one such thing as I begin to read here, we contemplate this one such thing we see that Paul begins to address right at the onset of this letter. That Paul begins to deal, amen, with hereditary or heretic teaching against the preeminence. 
Christ of the Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, Paul first, when he begins to write this letter, the first thing that he begins to address, amen, is that, amen, was hereditary or heretic teaching, false doctrine that was being taught, amen, in the premises or in the house of God, in the midst of the people of God, amen, and this teaching was against the preeminence of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so I like how Paul is dealing with this because there are some things that have come up against the church, some things that have found their way, amen, by way of doctrine into the house of God that should not be. And I like how Paul deals with this because he's not timid and he doesn't waste time, he doesn't tiptoe around, amen, amen, the defense of the doctrine of Paul goes right there, amen, if you were to look at Colossians chapter number 1 verses uh -huh. 18 and 19, Paul begins to declare, amen, that he, Christ, is the head of the body of the church who is the beginning and the firstborn from the dead. us, uh, amen, that the church of the living God has found ourselves at a very critical point, uh, amen, amen, there are many things that are being taught now, amen, that are passing for the gospel, that are passing, uh, amen, for sound doctrine, that are no longer, that are no sound, uh, amen, that are not sound, amen, in their essence, uh, and it is Paul now that is standing up to defend the gospel that was once delivered unto the saints, I can hear Jude in my ear now. Drawn back into legalism. You know, take 
handle now that these things perish with the using. In other words, Paul is trying to get us to understand that what you receive down on the inside. My God, I hear him say now that our faith does not lie in the wisdom of man, but it's in the power of God. In other words, the church can become too intellectual.
these heresies uh, that the Gnostics have brought into the church. Uh, Now the Christian faith 
but they're not concerned about the power. And that's what I love about my friend here. Because the friend here is not just concerned about sounding good. But I can hear the Lord say, if you preach this gospel, then I will confirm it with signs following. If we have no signs, seers, and all we got is good preaching, then we ourselves become philosophy. We sound like vain jangling. And it's time out for vain jangling. What good is a good message if nobody gets delivered? What good is changing keys if you still bound up like you was last week? But I wonder if there ain't anybody in here who says, I believe in God. What we had back in the day is still powerful enough to break every addiction. What we got today is still powerful enough to deliver your child from drugs. You ought to give your testimony sometime and say, I know what prayer can do. Prayer delivered me. Can somebody shout, yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. that is coming to the church. Paul goes through chapter number one, solidifying the preeminence of Christ. He declared that in him dwells the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and we are completing him. You don't need Jesus and plan B, because Jesus is enough. And I remember when they used to say, it's Jesus in the morning. In the new day, and Jesus, when the sun go down, even when your problem has not changed, I wish somebody would just grab the horns of the altar and say, I'm not gonna let you go like Jacob until you bless my soul. And the writer saying, For the seed of the righteous, they shall be delivered. I ain't lost, I know where I'm going. The seed of the righteous. Looking holy, but still being meaner than a junkyard. 
merchant come to this which is adultery. He said, you got to put off the flesh. And I never seen a time when so many professing Christians are acting like the world. We got more unforgiveness in us and we got more tongue. But the devil is a liar. How can you say you love God when you never seen and you can't even speak to your brother Oh! 
false doctrine could slip in and they were pinning it as if they were Paul. I know Pastor said that the devil is a liar. And so what Paul would do is that at the end of his letter, he would write a salutation to authenticate. Oh, yes, Lord.
be forgotten. Yes, it is. After you have pulled out labor, yes, going to be forgotten. Yes, Lord. Paul said, "Remember my chain." And while I've gone through the discourse of four chapters, still setting things in order to a people that possibly I've never seen before. But because you are a part of the body of Christ, I've labored faithfully. Yes, sir. But before you celebrate all of that, remember my change. One particular point, Paul said, Everybody has forsaken me. Everybody's gone and left me. I, I, Lord have mercy. I, I believe that the enemy desires to discourage the man of God. Oh yes, he does. Oh, I don't even know. I don't even know. I don't even know. Oh, I'm trying to subvert. Trying to deceive those that were following Paul. Yes, yes, yes. After they had already experienced being healed in Paul's yes, yes. They had already experienced the, the anointing that was on Paul's life that was authentic. It wasn't manufactured. It wasn't. Paul didn't have a bunch of lights and music and all that stuff. Paul had an authentic anointing. Yes, yes, yes. After having experienced all of that, it must it have been yes, yes. for Paul to realize that some that he labored with in the gospel yes. turned to question yes. his apostleship. Yes. He said, you my proof of my work and my apostleship. Woo. What God has done in your life through me. Yes. I'm not trying to get glory. Yes. But understand, yes. don't you let nobody fool you in the question in the source of your blessing. Yes. <laughs> Paul said in one place, he said, I've been in peril. Yes. Amongst countrymen. Yes. Amongst foes. I'm paraphrasing. Amongst my own kindred. Uh -huh. I had my own folk was hating on me. Yes. Uh -huh. Yes. 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 He said, in lack, in want often. Yes. I've been beaten. I've been stoned. I've been left. Why did you go through all that? Because I'm in chains. Yes. yes, sir. I've been apprehended that this gospel might get out. Yes. And Paul is saying, I don't want you to just remember my change and what I'm going through, but I want you to remember that I'm in chains while I'm still remaining faithful. Yes. Yes. And if in my chains I can still keep writing, you can keep going in what you're going through. feel sorry for me. But let my chains inspire you that all of this has happened to me for the furtherance of the gospel. I, I, I'm glad that I've been counted worthy. I'm glad that God selected me. I didn't earn it. I didn't deserve it. In many cases, he looked past my fault. Saw my need. So I don't stand here in a place to glorify I give him the glory. And if suffering is what we got to do, we'll just be brothers in all. If suffering is what we got to do, we'll be brothers in all. I realize that we're suffering here. We don't mind with it. God told me to tell you. Remember his chain. What kind of message is that? We don't need to shout. We, we, we need to sit down yeah, yeah. and realize that it's time to grow up. Yeah, yeah. We're killing pastors. Yeah, yeah. I'm meddling and I'm in. Right. My, my mother say we are ride a good horse to death. I ain't talking about my folk. I ain't talking about your folk. I'm talking about people on the other side of the world. I'm for real. We're riding a good horse to death. 
But I'm saying while he's here, appreciate him. Can I, can I just be honest? Yes, yes. Can I be real, real honest? Yes, yes. She read, he's preached for this one. Yes. He preached for that one. Yes. He preached over here. Uh -huh. He preached over there. Not because he's trying to be famous, but because he's trying to stay faithful. I think I'm a prisoner. I, 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 I don't do what I do for my gratification. Can I tell you something? That's not enough self-gratification in doing this. It's not. Him that's going to be greatest has to be the least. You have to be the doorman. After you have laid with them, talked with them, counseled them, been there for them, paid, done all of that, some would still walk away. What? But you gotta stay faithful. That's what God told me to tell you tonight. I'm not here to try to be grand and great. I'm here to encourage this man and woman of God. And I'm here to admonish you. Yes. Remember that check. Pray for them. I'm not saying they smile. They perfected the art of still standing, but in the middle of loss and lack. And, and yes, confusing, yes. they're still smiling, you still being blessed, but you better realize they're going through. Yes. Oh, yes. says, smite the shepherd. Yes, sir. And the sheep will scatter. That's right. right. That's right. The enemy is after your pastor. Yes, the enemy is after your first lady. Yes, he if he can't get them, he's after their children because that's closest to their heart. Yes. Cover them in prayer. Yes. And remember they said, God bless you. Perhaps there may be somebody here today that's under the sound of my voice that says, while I am to remember his chains, I'm still in chains myself. I've not been liberated. The enemy is still attacking my life. I still don't feel the freedom that I should be experiencing in God. Yes. Bible declares that the Spirit of the Lord God is upon us and He's anointed us to loosen them to the back. Yes. If you're here tonight and you don't know the Lord Jesus in the pardon of your sins, you don't know Him as your personal Savior, you've not been baptized in His name.